everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be playing with the two new palettes that were launched from the Chanel Le Beige 2021 collection. I did go ahead and pick up both of them and recently I did upload a full review, demonstration, swatches, comparisons, everything of this new color in the Soleil Tan de Chanel bronzing cream and by the way, update on that. I still love it. It's such a beautiful shade. I'm kind of obsessed with it, to be honest. Uh, so if you guys haven't checked out that video, I will link it up here in the iCards. After that video went live, I did tell you that I did buy both of the palettes and I would be reviewing them very soon. So here we are. We're going to dive into it today. This is my very first eyeshadow palettes from Chanel. And I've bought a few things over the last year from Chanel. Some are hit and miss, like some products I really, really love, and then others I just do not feel like they are worth it. So I'm kind of curious about these two eyeshadow palettes, and of course, later on in my final thoughts, I will let you guys know if I feel like these are worth the money. So this is the Intense palette, and this is the Tender palette. And you can see I'm wearing Tender on this eye and the Intense on this eye. The Intense is all solid shimmer like this entire palette shimmer this palette has some soft kind of like shimmer mattes they're more matte but they do have a little bit of shimmer in them in the tender palette while i was on the website i did go ahead and grab this this is called the healthy glow illuminating powder and if i'm not mistaken again i'm not super familiar with chanel i'm slowly tiptoeing in buying chanel but this I believe retails for $62 and this was launched last year in the 2020 Le Beige Summer Collection. When I saw this pop up on the website, I decided to go ahead and pick it up, but I don't think this is new this year. I believe it was last year's, but if I'm wrong, let me know. Now in this collection, they launched four new lip shades and they also launched some nail polish. I did go ahead and pick up a shade in the Coco Bloom. This is the Rouge Coco Bloom. I believe this is one of their newer formulas. It's not like brand new but it is a newer formula I haven't bought any shades in that new formula so I decided to go ahead and pick up a shade while I was on the website but I didn't buy one of the new four shades that were launched with this Le Beige 2021 collection I picked this up in the shade 124 and I'm wearing it right now and it actually matches the tender palette really well so if you were considering buying the tender palette or you have the tender palette and you wanted to pick up a lip shade that would match this works really well. Before we jump into the tutorials of these palettes, you guys know that I do like to kind of do a cost breakdown, especially when it's a new palette that I've never used and I'm not familiar with the formula. And I like to kind of break down the price of the palette so that you guys know how it compares to other brands that are on the market and what you're exactly paying for it. So like I said, these palettes retail for $65. You get 0.16 ounces worth of product, which is 4.5 grams. That makes this $14.44 per gram. And if you bought a full ounce of this eyeshadow palette, you would pay $409.38 per ounce. Up here on the screen is the image of the cost breakdown and how this compares to other brands that are out in the market. So I decided to compare it to a Tom Ford palette a Charlotte Tilbury palette. I also compared it to five pan Dior palettes and I still love this one. It's so beautiful. Uh, this is the uh, uh, 269 Tutu. It's such a beautiful palette. And I also compared it to the Chantecaille. Now, as you can see on the screen, the Chantecaille is the most expensive palette on this entire list, which is crazy, right? I know. So this palette only has 0.7 ounces, which is two grams worth of product. That makes this palette $36 per gram. And if you had a full ounce of this palette, you would pay $1,026.60 per ounce for this eye courtlet. These are very overpriced, you guys, extremely overpriced. I, there is no eyeshadow palette that is worth that for an ounce. I'm telling you right now, there is no eyeshadow formula on the planet that's worth that money. But anyway, we're not talking about Chantecaille today where it's all about Chanel. So that's all the information. Let's go ahead and jump into the two eyeshadow tutorials and then we will jump into the swatches and comparisons and I will compare these two palettes to other palettes that I have in my collection from other brands, obviously, because I don't own any other Chanel eyeshadow palettes. And then once we get through the swatches and comparisons, I will jump into my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then. Oh, 
Okay, so let's jump into these two palettes from Chanel. So let's go ahead and start with the palette Tender and then we'll jump into the other palette. So it does come with a brush and an applicator. I'm gonna start with this shade right here on the very top. I am going to put that right up here on the brow bone just to kind of highlight that area. I'm going to take a small blending brush, which is the refer number 13, and I'm going to go into this shade right here. And I'm going to sweep this in the crease. So I didn't put any concealer on yet because I didn't know if I would get any fallout from any of these shades. So right now I just have my foundation and my brows done. This is a pretty color. It blends out really pretty. I Let's mean, move on to the dark shade. I'm going to take the refer number two brush and I'm going to grab this shade right here. I'm going to pop that right here on the outer corner. So that's got more pigment than I expected it to, to be honest with you. I'm going to move back to the blending brush. I'm going to go back into the shade and just blend that out. I'm just gonna pack that color on one more time just to make sure I've got the right dimension. That color is tricky because if it's not the right tone, for me anyway, it can kind of make it look a little more, more like pink eye. I don't know, I'm not like a huge fan of it, but I will kind of carve this out when I put on the concealer, so I'm not really worried about this part. I'm gonna grab the Smith 253 brush and I'm gonna go into this shimmer shade right here. I am gonna pop that on the lid. It's a very soft shimmer. So for those that don't love a lot of shimmer. It's a pretty shimmer. I'm gonna take my finger and go into this shade right here. It's kind of like a sparkly, small, small glitter specks. And I'm gonna place it right here on the center of the lid, kind of going up. Okay, so I went ahead and threw on a concealer. Let's go ahead and move on to the lower lash line. I'm gonna first grab this shade right here and I am gonna bring that right underneath the lash line. Now I'm going to take my flat definer from Sigma and I'm going to grab this dark shade right here. I am going to focus that right underneath the lash line. I'm also going to do that on the upper lash line, like right at the base of the lashes, just to kind of get as much depth as I can up here on this outer corner. Okay, I'm gonna take a small pencil brush and I'm gonna go into the dark shade and I'm gonna pop that like right on the crease just to deepen it just a little bit. For the inner corner, I'm gonna use the brush that came in the palette and I'm gonna grab this light shade on the top. Just pop it like right here. And then I'm gonna go into this sparkly shade and just go right over top of it. That doesn't really have a lot of base to it. Um, so that's not really like the best shade for an inner corner highlight, but it'll work. Okay, I'm back. I went ahead and threw on some mascara, threw on a lash, and this is the final look. I, you know, these color tones can be a little tricky. A full color story like this, where you don't have anything to kind of break up the pink, can almost look a little pink eye if you know what I mean. But this turned out really pretty. I think this color right here, this shimmer that I have on my lid, kind of breaks up all of that pink and kind of gives it a little bit of a tone down. And so I was, I'm glad that they chose this color of shimmer to put with these pink shades. Of course, I will go ahead and get into my thoughts in my final thoughts. So for now, that's it for the look using the Tender Palette. Let's go ahead and jump into the next palette, which is the Intense Palette. 
Okay, let's go ahead and jump into this palette, which is the Intense palette. So this is a full shimmer palette, and I don't really have a lot of these tones in kind of a small compacted palette. So I'm kind of excited to see how these shades will look and how they will work. These are pretty shades though. They really are pretty shades. So I'm gonna start with my uh, fluffy brush and let's go into this shade right here. And I'm gonna put this right here on the outer corner. Just trying to see like what that color is. Kind of using it as the base. Good pigment, soft shimmer. So even though it has a shimmer to it, it's a very soft shimmer. Carves out and blends really beautifully. I mean, like I said, I am going to be kind of cutting this out. So uh, I'm not super worried about this area, but it blends so easily and so beautifully. I'm gonna grab this dark green right here, kind of creating the same look as I did on the other side, kind of taking the same steps. I'm going over top of the green here on the outer corner with this shade. Getting it a little shimmery and having that dark. Okay, so I kind of cleaned this up and of course I will buff out that line once I put on my concealer. Let's go ahead and move on to the shimmer shade. I wanna use this olive green. I think this green shade is really pretty. And I'm gonna apply this on the lid. That shimmer blends so beautifully. I am going to grab this shade right here, this gold shade, and I'm gonna place that right on the center of the lid. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on some concealer and then we will finish this eye look, but it looks really pretty so far. Okay, so I went ahead and threw on some concealer. I'm gonna grab this shade right here with the refer number two brush. Now I'm gonna take the flat definer from Sigma and go into the olive green color. Do the exact same thing. Just kind of focus that right here on the lower lash line and upper. I'm gonna go into this light shade on the top and I'm gonna put that on the brow bone. It's a pretty color. I'm also gonna bring that on the inner corner just to kind of brighten it up. And I'm gonna bring that like right here on the center. Okay, so I went ahead and threw on some mascara and so the eyelash and this turned out really pretty. It's more of like an evening eye look, but it's really, really pretty. That's it for the tutorials on the eyeshadow. I did put on a little bit of this Chanel. This is the uh, new shade in the Soleil Tan de Chanel. This is the Deep Soleil. This is shade 395. I just take a fluffy brush and just softly kind of build it on the skin. And I love it. It is so pretty and so easy to apply. And it gives you that soft tan, super buildable formula as well. And it seems like you can really build it and build it and it never gets muddy and gross. So I really, I still love this. I think it's such a beautiful bronzer. This is the only blush I have from Chanel. And I figured I would pop it on because it's kind of a Chanel day. I don't even know how you pronounce this, but this is made in Italy, by the way. But this is the Flores de Pretemps. I don't know, you guys. Uh, but this is the Duo Blush. It's a highlighter and blush duo. I'm going to dip my brush into this shade right here, which is kind of a coral peach color. And just kind of softly pop this on the cheeks. By the way, I'm also wearing the Chanel Le Beige. This is the Healthy Glow Foundation. I wear this in the shade BD61 and it matches my skin perfectly. It's a perfect shade. For a highlighter, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. So this is also a part of the Le Beige collection. 
This is called the Healthy Glow Illuminating Powder. This is in the shade Sand. And if I remember right, this was launched, I think, last year with the Le Beige Collection. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments down below. So I'm going to take my highlighter brush and bring it light, right along the cheekbone. Yeah, see, this is a very soft highlighter. This is a type of highlighter that won't, like, emphasize you know, any kind of texture or anything that you have. Uh, this is extremely soft on the skin. This is more of a traditional highlighting powder. So this is like what you would think a highlighter would be before we got into these like really strong kind of metallic. This is not the typical highlighters that we're used to using. It's like what a highlighter was intended to be just to actually highlight the points of the face. Uh, but not bring a lot of shimmer or emphasis to that side of the face. So this does do exactly what it's supposed to do. But you can see it's really pretty, but it's not emphasizing. You can see I have some texture along here, but it's not emphasizing it. With the new Le Beige 2021 Summer Collection, they launched four new shades in the... This is the Rouge Cocoa Bloom. I don't have any of this formula in my collection, so I wanted to try it. So I didn't get one of the new shades. I got the shade 124. It looks really pretty. Ooh, look how pretty that is. Now that looks like a really pretty shade, and it's got such good pigment. So it's got a really good shine element to it. Now, I have really been enjoying the uh, Rouge Coco Flash. This is the shade 132 Flushed. I absolutely love this shade. But I heard that this new Bloom is even better of a formula. But look how pretty that shade is. Oh, I love this shade. It's so pretty. I keep it in my purse. Let's go ahead and try on the shade 124 in the Bloom formula. So the Coco Bloom versus the Coco Flash. The Coco Bloom is like a new formula that they have launched, I think within like the last six months or something. I'm not exactly sure. I just know it's a newer formula. Uh, and I can tell you that this feels more, a little bit more like lipstick. So it's a little bit thicker when you apply it than the Coco Flash. Uh, but this is a really, really pretty shade. That's it. And That's all the application for all the products that we were discussing in today's video. Let's go ahead and jump into the swatches and comparisons. And then of course I will jump into my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then.
Okay, everyone, I hope that those swatches and comparisons were helpful for you. Let's go ahead and jump into my final thoughts. First, I want to talk about the formula overall. I didn't really have any issues with these palettes, nothing. They blend beautifully. The shimmers are soft enough to blend really beautifully in the crease. The formula does remind me of a Charlotte Tilbury formula. They're pigmented and they blend beautifully and the shimmers look really pretty in the crease. Like it kind of checks all the boxes of a Charlotte Tilbury palette. I don't really feel like this palette is better than Charlotte Tilbury, even though it's a little bit more money per gram. Uh, I do feel like the Charlotte Tilbury mattes are a little bit more pigmented than like this, but this was a pretty pigmented palette and it blended beautifully. Like these are just very easy everyday palettes and I could see someone like my mom who doesn't really have a lot of experience with makeup would really enjoy a formula like this because it's just easy to use. Um, it just doesn't take a lot of hassle to use a palette like this. So I, I really like the formula overall. Now, out of the two palettes, I would say I probably like the Intense palette the most only because this is a little bit different than what I have in my collection, especially in a five pan palette. I feel like this is probably more unique for my personal collection. I did compare the Tender palette to a lot of Charlotte Tilbury because that's kind of the vibes it was giving me. Overall, I think these are really pretty, but I don't really know that they're fully necessary and I'm gonna be completely honest with you I don't know that I'll reach for them all that much like I feel like I'm fine with having them like I don't know that I regret the purchase but I can't see myself reaching for them a lot I do actually really like this eyeshadow look for the summer uh, especially with this lipstick it's kind of you know pulled it together this kind of gives me more like fall vibes which I really love I think this will be really pretty in the fall so Overall, I don't really have anything negative to say about these palettes, but I have to be honest and admit that I don't know that I'll reach for these all that much. So I just don't know if they're worth it. Uh, unless you're a collector and you like these like limited edition, you know, summer palettes, then I would say go ahead and grab them, obviously. But um, if you don't see yourself using these a lot, I just don't know that they're fully necessary. I don't know. I think they're really pretty, but I just don't, I'm not like over the moon about them, right? Like I don't feel like I'm just blown away. Uh, one of the, the, the good things about these palettes is I feel like these are perfect for those who don't really like a lot of strong shimmers. For those that don't like those strong Pat McGrath metallic formulas where it's just straight strong highlighted metallic and it's just you're blinding from the moon right for those that don't really like that strong shimmer shade these are perfect because these are a very soft and easy to apply and i feel like they go over the lid very beautifully i don't feel like they exaggerate wrinkles or texture or anything like that so if you are somebody that doesn't like a strong shimmer i think you'll enjoy these and i can see um that that would probably be their main market these from chanel i don't feel like stand out in any way that makes them unique enough to say that i will use them a lot or it justifies the 65 dollars. but all in all these are really pretty and i think you just have to decide you know look at them will it be something that you will absolutely need and if not save your money and get something else you know in my opinion if you skip these you're not fully missing out on anything super special that's kind of where i'm leaving it so that's my overall thoughts stand up down below in the comment section let us know your opinion have you guys bought these palettes and if you did share with us in the comments section your experience and also if you love Chanel share your love for Chanel like what do you love about Chanel what draws you to the formula and if you don't love Chanel let us know I'm just so curious so sound up down below in the comment section thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in today's video I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys all in my next video love you bye